Today I'm going to be talking about isentropic relations and what they are and how to use them. Basically what they are are uh, temperature and pressure relations um, with respect to each other. So you can find missing temperatures and pressures if you have, you know, if you're given a final temperature and an initial temperature, you can solve for the pressure change and, and that kind of thing. So what I'm going to show you is two basic equations. It's basically the same equation rearranged, but I'll call it two different basic equations. So the first one here is going to be temperature. And so that's going to be T2 over T1 equals P2 over P1. And it's going to be raised to a power gamma minus 1 over gamma. Now I'm saying that T2 is our final temp, T1 is the initial temp, and the same for the pressures. This is the final and this is the initial. Now gamma is our K in this case. You may know it from chemistry or some physics as, as K, which is the ratio of specific heats. Oops, heats which is CP over CV. I'm not going to get over get into CP over CV and what that is and what that means and all the chemistry behind that, but that is what it is. So we're just going to use gamma because in this case um, I'm going to do an example with air where the standard gamma of air is equal to 1.4. Now this is a unitless quantity just because it is a ratio. It's it's not a measurement of anything. It's just a ratio. So the next equation is very similar and in fact you can just basically rearrange this one and we'll, it's going to turn into P2 over P1 equals T2 over T1. Now in order to get this exponent over uh, you just have to flip it. So it's going to become gamma over gamma minus 1. So this is the pressure uh, equation. If you're, if you're given a temperature change and you want to find the pressure change or you want to find the final pressure or initial pressure, whatever, then you're going to use this equation number 2 here. So let's do an easy example. And let's do this. Okay, so let's say that we have, um, let's say we have an initial temperature uh, T1 of 75 degrees Fahrenheit, and let's say our initial pressure is 14.7 psi, and that's absolute psia, so sea level. And let's say we're going to take this, this pressure and we're going to use a compressor of some type for whatever reason to compress this. And our final pressure is 30 psi A. So it's like we're putting air in a tire or something like that. Um, that'd be a little bit higher than this, but whatever. All right, so we want to find what our final temperature of that air is going to be after we compress it. So we can go ahead and use equation number one here. And so we're going to say that T2, we can rearrange this and move this T1 over, equals T1 to P2 over P1 to the gamma minus 1 over gamma. OK, so now we're just, we, we have everything except for our final temperature. So let's solve this. So we got 75 degrees Fahrenheit and 30 psi A over 14.7. Okay, and then our ratio of specific heats up here, uh, 1.4 minus 1 over 1.4. Now, as you can see, uh, these pressure units are going to cancel and we'll be left with the uh, temperature ones right here and so what that tells you is, is you can use any units of pressure as long as they're consistent and they're the same in here and you can use any units of 
temperature because whatever unit this is in is going to come out in the answer. So you can use uh, whichever you want for that. So this is going to work out to be T2 equal to 91.96 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so let's think about that. What does that mean? That means that we are just about doubling this pressure and the temperature is going to go up by about 17 degrees, just under 17 degrees. So it's not a direct linear relationship, but you are going to get a pressure rise when you raise the temperature. And if this, if, you, if we had lowered the temperature and the gas was expanding, then we would have gotten a temperature drop. So let's try to do this um, with the uh, second equation here. So we're going to say that P2 over P1 equals, actually let me do this, let's just solve for it. P2 is going to equal to P1, again just move that over, T2, T1, and this exponent is flipped, that's 1, okay. So just just to prove this, let's let me use the same numbers that we did in the first example. So let's say um, we've got P1 here, so let's go, we've got 14.7 PSIA and our T2 is what we solved for, 91.9 six degrees Fahrenheit and what was our initial temperature? 75 degrees Fahrenheit to the 1.4 over 1.4 minus 1. Okay, so if I throw this into my calculator here P2 equals 30 point zero zero PSIA and if I'm not mistaken that was the original temperature rise that we chose just just to try it out so that's how you use these equations um, again you have to assume that there's no heat transfer in or out of the system and nothing else is gonna change you know temperature added or removed um, so if you're just taking a volume of air and you're compressing it a certain amount, these are going to be your temperature changes or vice versa. If you have a fixed volume of air and you're changing the temperature, you can find the, um, the pressure change here. And um, that's all I have.